Now we move on to the borders of the quilt. Remember we have pieced our quilt totally and now we're putting our beautiful scallop borders together. We decided we wanted to do a scallop border on this quilt as we hadn't done one before and we thought that this is so easy to do, we should put it on this quilt. So the borders are made up of individual scallops which fit into your hoop. So you say, well, what do we do at the corner? Well, let's look at the corner. We're going to put our two short pieces of borders onto our quilt and we have each large circular cornered scallop is made up of one, two, three pieces, which all join together. So for our short ends, of our borders we only have partial circle made up of one piece and for our long ends if I fold that over which would be maybe our sides you notice you have a larger piece that's made up of two sections again remember this is all in the detailed step-by-step -step pictures that we have in a place in the Sun so here are our three pieces one two, three. Now we're suggesting that when you cut around the outside edge of your border scallops, maybe you should leave a little bit of fabric and you can come and trim them back to the cutting line later. That's up to you. So if we have joined our scallops, and this is just pretend because I needed to have room, I can't spread them out in such a small space. We've joined these scallops with the Jenny join and the little satin stitch ball all done in cotton thread. Then we have to add on each end of our shorter border pieces one section of our scalloped corner or half circle corner and we join that with the Jenny join and that's the end of let's say our top and bottom borders. For the next side which will be our side borders we will need to join two pieces from our corner sections for our borders so that it will then join here to make this lovely circle and keep going round into a square. So we've dealt with the Jenny join to put this together. So you would do your borders for the top of your quilt, for the bottom of your quilt and the longer ones for your sides. Now let's talk about binding. You have to cut your binding fabric and join it on the bias. I've got pins in these two pieces so they indicate the right side of the fabric. So you put your right sides of fabric together and make sure that the top piece well and truly you can take it down further if you like or you can make it even whichever way you like make sure that it overlaps the bottom edge of the piece you are placing it over and then fold the two pieces over aligned like that and then you know that you've got your right sides together some of us have been known to put the wrong sides together and then you have an exact 45 degree line on which to stitch. Trim your fabric back to a quarter of an inch, iron your seam out flat and cut off the excess fabric from the bottom. So now you've joined your bias for your... Now pick up your pieced binding and fold it in halves lengthwise, wrong sides together and press it in one continuous piece. We are now going to put our binding onto our scalloped edge. Now what I first want you to do is to go down on each scallop a quarter of an inch and mark it and then come with your scissors and cut down to that quarter inch line and you need to do that on every dip on all your scallops. Now the secret of getting a lovely flat 
scallop at the dip and these are very deep dipped scallops is that when you're pull, pinning your binding on you need to pull the cut in the dip out straight and so the edge of your quilt then becomes straight paralleled and aligned to the edge of your binding. Now Robbie and I found it easier to do it if you use a little bit of fabric glue to glue it around the edge and pin it in place particularly where you need that straight edge. Now remember the edge of your binding cannot go down into the dip but as long as it is straight and you are stitching with a quarter inch seam it will clear the clip. Now when you have stitched all your binding in place we then have to come and clip in the curves at intervals and the sharper the curve the more clips. Don't go beyond your quarter inch mark. Now we have one here that we did, this was our play one. So you can see here, if I pull this down this way, I've got to keep my hands down or I'm in trouble, that we stitched our binding on straight. So our binding has all been stitched on straight so that when we turn it to the wrong side, pin it and sew it, you get a perfect pleat in the dip of your scallop and if I turn it over you will notice you will get a similar pleat on the back so that when you're hand sewing your binding you just hand sew the dip in your scallop. Now I suggest that when you start sewing your binding on that you leave a tail probably a couple of an inch tail so that when you come to the other end and you're joining all you have to do is fold this back so that when you fold it when you fold it back this way it's going to form sorry everybody it's going to form a straight line so we're going to fold this back so that it's going to form a straight line with the edge there then we come with the other end and tuck it under and join the two together with a hand slip stitch. So the back of your work looks equally as nice as the front. Here we've got a little finish where we finished there. You will notice we've overlapped one and we've overlapped this one and you hand stitch them in place. We do have detailed step by steps for this and it is very hard to exactly show you it all in this video but we wanted to give you a little preview so that you can watch what we've done as well as work with our detailed step by steps. Now sit back and admire your quilt. It is finished. How much fun is it that when you have finished doing all your pieces for a quilt and you've laid it out on the floor and you've pieced it and you put your borders on and you don't have to quilt it. All you have to do is bind it and your quilt is complete. Perfect on one side and glorious on the other side. I know you will have enjoyed doing this technique. It's a wonderful technique and you will enjoy your place in the sun. Now go have a swim, sit down by the beach with an umbrella and have a cool drink and think about all the new exciting things and new techniques that will be coming out soon from the studio of Jenny and Simon Haskins. I also want to say thank you to Robbie who did all the detailed step by steps and the photography as well as making the quilt. She did a fabulous job and thank Laurie our patient photographer who's had to keep up with my ever moving hands and my ever racing voice. So I hope you enjoy your place in the sun and here's to sitting down and a beautiful swim and lying in the sun reading your place in the sun book.